Welcome everyone to another Khan Academy tutorial. We're going to be talking about the midpoint formula today. So all those geometry or algebra students that need help with some coordinate midpoints, we'll talk about that right now. Our first problem is point A is at negative 6, 5 and B is at 3, negative 7. What is the midpoint of line segment AB? First thing we need to understand is what is a midpoint? If we have a midpoint, and we're going to just draw a horizontal midpoint here. Nice horizontal line. I know it's not a perfect line, but you get the idea. A midpoint is a location that splits this line, this orange line, into two equal parts on either side of that point. So let's say, for example, that this whole thing was 10 inches. I know you guys are loving these straight lines. This would be, if, if blue is a midpoint, that would make each one of these green arrows 5 inches and 5 inches. Okay, so midpoint means it separates into two equal parts, equal halves. Now, how do we go about finding a midpoint when it's like a diagonal line like this, where A and B are not in the same uh, horizontal or vertical axes? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to break it down into two components. We're going to break it down into its horizontal component. And as we know, the horizontal axis is the x-axis. And then we're going to break it down into its vertical component. And that's the y-axis. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the x-axis. Um, but even before we do that, we should probably label these points. Let's label it right on the graph here, negative 6, 5. And then let's label this one 3, comma, negative 7. Okay. Now, let's think horizontally first. If this were just a line that went horizontally from its x value. So here we have the negative 6 is the x value, and then we have 3 is the x value. So if it went from that point to that point, what would be the midpoint of that? Well, you could count from either direction. 1, 2, 3, kind of like we did with the, the green arrow up here with the 5 inches until you land on a common point that's the same distance. That can get tricky sometimes with decimals. So another way to do it is to find the average of the two points. So one of our points is negative six in terms of the horizontal axis. The other point is three. And we want to find the average of this. Why the average? Well, the average is a measure of center. If you and uh, another person are in the room, and you want to find the average age, you would add those two ages together and divide by two. There's two people, divide by two. If we want to find the average between two points, we add the points together, negative six plus three, and then we divide by two. And that will give us our center, what the average age is, essentially, or the average value. So here we have negative six plus three, we get three, divide by two, and that's two ways to write it. We can either keep it as three over two or write it as 1.5 okay that is a way we can find the midpoint of this horizontal distance so we know that 1.5 units um 1.5 units uh actually that's a negative isn't it so that's a negative three negative 1.5 units so negative 1.5 on our axis here and that is right here is the the horizontal area where it's going to be the midpoint of this line. Now we need to apply the vertical midpoint. So we, our two vertical values are 5 and negative 7. Again, we're trying to find the average here, so we need to add them together and divide by 2. So we do 5 plus a negative 7 divided by 2. That gives us negative 2 divided by 2, and that is negative 1. So negative 1 is our average. And if you look here, if this was a vertical line connecting these two points, okay, the, the location would be negative 1. So here, if we go to negative 1, it should cross, and it looks like it does, right here. Now, does that look like the midpoint? It needs to be. It needs to be the midpoint because we found the horizontal midpoint and the vertical midpoint. Okay, so that's one way to do it, and we can ensure that. We can check that answer, and we're going to plug in negative 1.5, negative 1. Uh, let's go negative 1, whoops, negative 
and hopefully it doesn't want it as a fraction. It's a possibility that it does. It does not. Okay, there we go. Next question. All right, A is negative 3, 5, and point M is at negative 1, negative 7. Point M is the midpoint of point A and B. What are the coordinates of point B? This is a tricky problem. The number, This is the number one type of problem I see people miss with midpoint, and it's because this guy is an endpoint, but this one is not an endpoint. This is a midpoint. Okay, before what we did is we had um, our values of x and y, and we added those together. So the value of 1 is x1. The value of the other x value is x2. x1 for the first point, x2 for the second point. And we did the same thing for the y's. We added to the two y values together, y1 for the first point, y2 for the second point. And it doesn't matter which one you call which. And that was the location of our point. This ended up being negative 1.5 and negative 1 in our last problem. Now is a different case. Now we're told that the midpoint is negative 1, 7. So we're told what the midpoint is at the end. Uh, we'll call that, let me erase this real quick. We're given that the midpoint the x value of the midpoint and the x value of the y, uh, oops, sorry, the y value of the midpoint is equal to negative one seven. So it's not like we can just add this point together with our other value. We need to do something a little bit different. So we need to define our xm and our ym. Well, just as we did in the last problem, but not as explicitly, our xm is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. What does that mean? It just means to find the midpoint, our horizontal midpoint, we add the x values in the, uh, the, together and we divide by 2. Well, the same goes for our y values. Our y midpoint is going to be the same thing as our y values added together. And now we're just going to put in what we know. Well, what do we know? We know that a is at negative 3, negative 5. And we know our midpoint is at negative 1, comma, negative 7. So where is the other endpoint? That's what we're trying to find out. We know our midpoint already. We're trying to find the other endpoint. So well, let's plug in what we know. Well, we know that xm has a value. How do we know? Well, xm is up here. xm, that's our midpoint. That's our x value of that midpoint. And this is our y value of that midpoint. We'll call this x1. We could call it x2 if we want, but I just like calling it x1. And we call this one to match the x value. So we'll call it y1, x1, y1. And this is xm, ym, because this is a midpoint. What are we going to do from here? Well, what we need to do is we're going to plug in what we know. So instead of writing xm, I'm going to write negative 1 because that's what I wrote is my value of x1, or xm. x1, I wrote as negative three. So negative three plus, what's my x2? I don't know, so I'm gonna leave it as x2, and I'm putting divided by two. Next, I'm gonna write my formula for ym. So y, here, I know my ym. ym is negative seven. That's equal to my y1, negative 5, plus y2, divided by 2, and I can solve for that. Now it just becomes a matter of algebra and solving. So the first step you always do is you're going to, like, let's take the blue example. And I'll use, I guess, this t, no, I'll use red. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. And it cancels with the side on the right, and so we're left with negative 2 equals negative 3 plus x2. And then I add 3 to both sides to get the x2 by itself, and I get 1 equals x2. So now I have the location of my x value for b, and that is 1, comma. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to this light green so I can solve for y, for y2. Again, what you're going to do to both sides is you're going to multiply by 2. That's what this uh, 2 outside the parentheses indicates, so I get negative 14 
equals negative 5 plus y2. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I get negative 9 equals y2. So now I have my coordinates. This is 1 comma negative 9. And if I were to plot this, 1 comma negative 9, you would see that I could draw a line here between these, and these are equal distance away from the midpoint right here. So my answer is going to be 1 comma negative 9. 1 comma negative 9. And check that out. Okay. Since you already saw both types of problems, I'm going to call it a video so I don't bore you too much. Until next time, I'll see you.